From Schenectady, New York, he'll preach his way right into your heart. He's loved, and as far as I'm concerned, he'll probably be preaching ever because the time there is, because he's had a ministry ever since this thing started. From New York, Brother Lee Stone King, open your heart. Would you clap your hands? We've done it a lot. But would you clap your hands, all ye people? And the Bible says to shout with the voice of triumph. For the Lord is great, and he is greatly to be praised. Do it one more time. That sounds tremendous. I feel the wonderful touch of the Master's hand in this place tonight. And because Jesus is here, anything can happen. Anything can happen in the presence of the Lord. For He is great, and He is greatly to be praised. I want to read to you tonight from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 10 and 11. Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 10 and 11. The Bible says, penned, spoken, from the brilliant court preacher Isaiah. He said, for as the rain, everyone say rain, rain. cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word, everyone say word. word. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. I want to simply entitle this tonight, What Will My Destiny Be? Will you say that to me, together with me tonight? What will my destiny be? There will be a massive healing in this place tonight. It will come through the gift of faith and the gifts of healing. I feel tonight in view of what is building in the spirit world in this place and the faith that is beginning to lift and rise in this place that we ought to one more time with our mouth, with our hands, clap again unto the Lord and shout unto the Lord with the voice of be the name of the Lord forever. seated. This is the church of the living God. What we feel in this place is from ancient days. What is here tonight transcends human logic and reasoning and understanding. What is in this place tonight cannot be explained with human reasoning or logic. Something is here tonight that transcends all of that. This church 
that we are in tonight was predestinated by God in his divine providential plan it was the divine will of God that there would be a people who would serve him who would adhere to his name to his statutes to his laws to his concepts and to his precepts we tonight pride ourselves as being in that great and royal and glorious number this church was predestinated by God himself Himself. And it's going to be, friend of mine, whether you and I are a part of it or not. It is predestinated. Somebody, somewhere, will serve the Lord. Somebody, somewhere, will embrace His holy name. Somebody, somewhere, will lift up the torch and preach as thus saith the Lord. There's going to be a church. There is a church in the world tonight. It is here. The church is predestinated. The devil's destination is predestinated. I like so much what Brother Barnes said. He said, the first time I ever read about him, he was falling. Lucifer began in the holy mount of God. And because of rebellion, he was thrown out. Downward. Everyone say downward. He was thrown out downward and became prince and power of the air. During the tribulation period, he will be thrown downward again into the earth. But during the millennial reign, he will be thrown downward again into a bottomless pit. And out of that, he will come forth and be thrown downward into the lake of fire. The devil is on his way down, but this church is on its way up. This church is on its way up this church shall rise to meet him in the clouds of glory if you believe that if you're a part of that would you clap again and shout with your voice a voice of triumph up and out in the name of Jesus of Nazareth The church is predestinated. The devil's destination is predestinated. But the individual has a will of his own. Man can somehow mold his own destiny day by day. What a man is today is what he thought yesterday. What he is tomorrow is what he thought of himself today. The Bible says as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Friend of mine, the thing you give yourself to is the thing that you will become. The thing that you give your attention to is the thing that you will become in the end result you will become like the thing to which you give your time energy and attention as the stream merges into the ocean at last as inevitably as the streams of the continents flow at last by one means or another into the mighty waters of the oceans and the seas of the global world so the thing that you give yourself to is the thing that you become if you give yourself to clowning you will become a clown if you give yourself to intellect you will become intellectual if you give yourself to athletics you will become an athlete but if you will give yourself to this man called Jesus if you will follow after him you will become like him if you will seek him you will find him for it is written ask and you shall receive seek and you shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you for everyone that asketh receiveth and he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be opened thus it is written and thus it is you will become like him if you seek after him Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psychologists then and now say that mankind is a product of heredity and environment. And I do not believe it. 
I was taught in Bible college that we are a product of heredity and environment and I do not believe it. That may be true for the man on the street but hear me tonight if you have been to water in the name of Jesus Christ if you have been filled again with the water of life that can never run dry namely this baptism of the Holy Ghost speaking with tongues. Your past is gone. There is a new man walking in your shoes there is something again I reiterate to you that transcends human logic and reasoning and understanding I have been born again I have been born again old things are passed away behold all things have become new you can break anything you can break a heredity factor you can change a mentality you can change a personality you can change anything I don't care where you came from it cannot touch you if you hold on to your born again experience. Go ahead and shout. There is something mighty in revelation and understanding in this place tonight. Hallelujah. The psychologists of Jesus' day believed exactly what they believe in our day. He was a Nazarene. When the news of his miracle spread forth through the land, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, knowing the ill reputation of Nazareth, said, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? They curled up their lips and their noses and because of his environment they gave him no credence and they gave him no place. But let me tell you something here tonight. My father, bless the memory of him, he was an alcoholic until the last few years of his life. If I believed what psychologists teach and adhere to, then I would have been an alcoholic also because I was raised in that environment. But I said I will not be an alcoholic. I will not be an alcoholic. I don't care tonight where you come from. Jesus came from Nazareth, but his environment did not touch him his environment did not affect him he rose above it and friend of mine if you have been born again of the water and the spirit it does not matter who your father was it doesn't matter who your mother was it doesn't matter how many rascals are in your heredity line it does not matter I have been born again I have been born you heard last night you heard the painful synoptic description of a life that was lived in this world in the streets of New York City by Jeff Arnold the elite of our society would have taken one look at him years ago and said he's a reject he'll never amount to anything but friend of mine there is there is a way to shape your own destiny there is a way to shape your own destiny you're not just a thug walking on the streets but you are a son of the most high God changed in his likeness and in his image. What a noble spirit. What a noble spirit. What a noble spirit. That is attestation. That is attestation that the gospel is true. That the gospel is true. What man cannot do. There is a God that says try me. Try me. Try me. And God is speaking to a lot of you here tonight. He is speaking to a lot of people here tonight that have been bogged down because your daddy was not James Kilgore and your daddy was not Gerald Mangan. Let me tell you something. When you got the baptism of the Holy Ghost speaking with tongues, you got all the heritage that you're ever going to need in this present world. If you have spoken with tongues, you've got all the heritage that you're ever going to need in this present world. You've got everything. 
everything that you needed. I break those chains. I break that bondage in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth because you're really somebody. You are really somebody. You are really somebody. You are really somebody. You're a child of the king. You're a prince. You're a princess. You're going to reign forever with him someday. You're going to reign with him forever someday. You may be seated. I had a distant, 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 distant cousin, one of those kinds, that nobody, nobody wanted to know much about. Nobody wanted to be involved with him. I never did meet the man, but I heard about him all the years I was growing up from both my father's side of the house and my mother's side of the house. But there came a day, and there always does, you know. There came a day when the wretched lifestyle that he lived somehow took its toll upon his physical stature. And he was placed in a hospital, and he was dying. Somehow my mother, who was a saint of the Most High God, she heard that he was in the local hospital, had not seen him for years. And my mother went to the hospital and they told her, they said, he will be dead before dawn. He will not live through the night. This rascal who had done everything in the book, unmentionable things, he had done everything that this human body can do as far as I can remember from the stories that were told. But my mother went to him in the late afternoon and she sat down in a chair, pulled it up beside his bed where he lie there in extreme weakness. And my mother witnessed to him about the baptism of the Holy Ghost and she said, I can't give it to you. And I can't do more than what I'm doing. She said, but in order to get it, I know this. You've got to repent. You've got to genuinely repent. You must repent of everything. And after about an hour, she left him. And the story went on like this. When my mother left the hospital, as the long shades of night began to come through the window, and the sun began to sink in the west, with what strength this dying man had, he crawled out of the hospital bed and knelt down beside the bed and when the nurses came in they told us later they said we could hear him talking to God he had gone back to his childhood and he had told God everything he had ever done it took him hours and hours and hours nine o'clock came and he was still there they came and went to check on him but he would not get up from the floor of the hospital room. And 10 o'clock came. 11 o'clock came. Midnight came. And he was weeping now and telling God that he was sorry for all of these things that he had done. Finally, in the wee hours of the morning, he crawled back up into the bed. And the nurse's story said this. She said when we went in to check on him, he was lying on his back with his hands raised to the ceiling. And he was talking in all of these languages that we could not understand. She said he was talking in languages we'd never heard before. She said we stood there and watched him when he breathed his last breath. The hands fell to the bed and the last words we heard were words that we could not understand. That man on the, on the weight of a simple testimony changed the course of his destiny. He changed the course of his destiny and you can change the course of your destiny here tonight it's up to you but friend of mine you've got to reach this position you've got to decide somewhere in your life how much of God you want and how much of yourself that you are willing to give Time and time again, God said he would destroy Israel, but he repented over and over. He repented he ever made man, and then he found Noah. 
and he became thrilled again with his creation. God said in 40 days Nineveh will be destroyed. Jonah the prophet had boldly declared such a thing and Jonah wanted that. He was more concerned about his position and what the people would think about his prophecy. He would have let them burn. But when God saw the king of Nineveh crawl off his throne, bringing even the dogs and the cats in sackcloth and ashes, this God whose presence we feel in this place tonight repented of the evil that he had thought to do to them. God became so vexed with those Hebrew children that he spoke to Moses face to face as a man talks to his friend and he said Moses I'm going to wipe them out but in his heart of hearts this God did not really want to wipe them out so what did he do? You know why he went to Moses? Because he knew that Moses would talk him out of it and he wanted to be talked out of it. He wanted to be talked out of it and Moses did talk him out of it and God backed off I'm telling you here tonight if Moses could change the heart of God he was a man of like passions as has been preached in this conference if he could do it we can do it if he could do it we can do it if he can do it we can do it I have read the story of Josiah Josiah a child king hear me tonight people the wrath of God had fallen the curse of God had fallen the prophecies of doom had been uttered from the voices of prophets and God said I will destroy all the house of Israel but Josiah a child king heard the word of the Lord read and when he did he read not only his garments but also his heart and when God saw it. God said, Josiah, come here, come here. I want to tell you a thing. I want to tell you a thing. My curse will yet fall, but not in your lifetime. Not in your lifetime. Not until you have been gathered together to your fathers. Then, Josiah, for the sake of your repentance, for the sake of your cry, I will withhold it in your lifetime. Your children will be raised in my house, so to speak. Things will go on in glory and honor. But when you're gone, Josiah, then I will bring it to pass. And God held his word in the living room of my own apartment one day looking at the peril of this present hour and world I said God and I began to weep and cry I said if you heard the voice of Josiah you were obligated to hear my voice do something for America God bless America give us a revival from shore to shore and from border to border withhold the wrath let our children be raised in freedom not under communism not under the hammer and the sickle people as far as I am concerned there is no hope without revival revival is the answer to everything revival is the answer to everything revival is the answer to everything this Holy Ghost is the answer to demonology and cultism this Holy Ghost is the answer to the ills of this world because it is written thus greater is is he that is within you and he that is in the world. Everybody shout greater. Again. Again. Clap as unto the Lord. Jesus. 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 David King David the shepherd boy the harpist the singer God broke his own laws to save David prophets had declared it it had been penned the law had been executed many times over when Nathan the prophet walked into the presence of the king and when he pointed a finger at David and said David thou art the man David 
began to slip from the throne and as he slipped he took the crown from his head and he lowered himself to the floor with the groan of agony that only a penitent soul can know and God himself stepped out from behind the law and pushed the law behind him and came into that throne room of an earthly king and stooped over his shepherd boy and with arms of compassion he unfolded this weeping king and whispered in his ear, Thou shalt not die. He broke his own laws for David. You, friend of mine, can indeed shape your own destiny. You can shape your own destiny. You can mold your own destiny here tonight for the rest of your entire life. It does not matter who says what. It does not matter where you came from. I reiterate, it does not matter about your background. Please hear me tonight. It's not how you begin in this that counts. It's not what happens in between. It's how you end in this that counts. It's how you end in this that counts. Samson went down, but when he went down, he slew more in his death than in his life. His end was glorious, and he's among the faithful. David, his body was not left under a pile of stones, a dead, broken, bleeding body because of God. God and the nature that God has and is. Some of you here tonight, I have spotted a number of you in this congregation. I've watched many of you from the night this thing opened. Some of you will be mightily used by God before this whole thing is over. For this reason I say it, nobody, nobody can keep you from getting all of God that you want. Nobody can stop you from praying all night tonight. Nobody can stop you from speaking with tongues until the rising of the sun. Nobody can stop you from dancing and shouting. Nobody can stop you from studying the word of God from morning till night. Nobody can stop you. Nobody can stop you. There isn't anything that can stop you. Nobody can stop you. You can have as much of him as you want. You can get as much of him as you want. You can get as much of this God as you want. Nobody can stop you. Nobody can stop you. How how do you fight a man that steps to the bow of a little ship and says to an angry storm, Peace, be still! And the waves become placid and the wind stops howling. How do you fight a man who walks up to a cripple on a stretcher and says, Thy sins be forgiven thee? You may not like his message. You may not even like his method. But exactly how does one fight it when the cripple gets up, rolls up his bed, and walks home with it? How do you fight somebody that walks up to the tomb of a friend who's been dead for four days and the body's beginning to stink? And this man called Jesus says, Lazarus! It's a good thing, folks. He named him because if he'd have just said, Come forth, the whole resurrection would have come parading out of that tomb entrance because this Jesus, you see, he was the resurrection and he was the life and he still is. He still is. He can raise the dead. He can cause the lame to walk, the blind to see, the deaf to hear. How 
do you fight somebody that doesn't even bother to knock at your door? He just comes to the wall and sits down at your table and says, I'm going to have lunch with you. How do you fight somebody like that? You don't fight somebody like that. You don't fight somebody like that. How do you fight these Pentecostals that you're among tonight? I've got news for you. You don't fight us. There's no way to fight us because what we've got a hold of is greater than anything in this entire universe. There is nothing to match it. There is nothing to equal it. There's nothing like it, Papa. There's nothing like it never has been, never will be again. do you fight this? You don't fight this. You can take a good long look at us and say that's enough for me but I got news for you. In the middle of the night when you're trying to sleep you'll hear us singing. You'll hear us preaching when you're trying to get to work and you're trying to get us out of your mind. There'll be angels sitting on the hood of your car. They'll be in the front seat tapping you on the shoulder and there is nothing you can do about it. You can't fight what you can't see. You can't fight what you can't see. You can't fight what you can't see. How do you fight this? You do not fight this. You cannot fight this. We're going to win, folks. It's already been determined. It's already been determined. It's already been determined. It's already been determined. We are the winner. We're the winner. Say, I'm the winner. Yeah, I believe you believe it. Exactly. Exactly. What do you do with an empty wheelchair? What do you do with an empty wheelchair? When the victim is running down the aisle screaming, I can walk. I've been healed. I've seen nine people get out of wheelchairs in the last two years. Nine people I've seen get out of wheelchairs. That's not a law, but it's a beginning. It's a start. How do you fight that? you fight it when the victim's running down the aisle screaming, I'm healed. I can walk. At best you push the wheelchair away and pile it someplace. You may not like me and you may not like them. You may not like the message, but what do you do with an empty wheelchair? What do you do with a stack of crutches? Exactly what do you do? What does the doctor do when this x-ray shows it and this x-ray doesn't show it? When this x-ray shows it and this x-ray doesn't show it? Exactly what do you do with all of that? You don't do anything with that because you can't do anything with that. You can't fight it. You can't. Nobody can. Now, God, let's get down to it. <clears throat> now, God in this hour is allowing this church to mold her own destiny. This conference is a conference of destiny, eternal destiny. Something has been born here that will never die. Something has been born here that will never die. There's no way to kill it. There's no way to kill this. There's no way to kill it. Yeah, here it, devil, here it is right. We are here to stay. God is breaking things to pieces. God is tearing up everything. You can't fight a move of God. You can't fight a move of God.
I remember years ago, I've been in Pentecost 25 years, UPC. I've been in this for 25 years. Years ago, on the JT Pew, we had end time revival. And in the whole missionary areas where I was in New York State, nobody knew we existed. Nobody knew that we were there. Nobody seemed to care. And here we were. And Brother Pew came and would teach us and lift us up. And there was a real stir in those days, Brother Kilgo. I remember, you remember, but we got sidetracked with some miserable issues and the revival died we are now walking through the threshold we're not honored we're walking through it we are walking through a threshold into the realm of the supernatural brother Howell we are walking through the threshold of the greatest most earth shaking revival this world has ever known now here's the good news I've heard a lot of tongues and interpretations. I've heard a lot of prophecies in 25 years. And so have you. And most all of them I have forgotten. But about 12 or 15 years ago, in the home of some people who feared God, we were having dinner, dinner one night, and we got to talking about Jesus. You know what happens when you talk about Him? He comes. He comes. And as he came into that dining room, we had roast beef and brown gravy and mashed potatoes and green beans and corn. I can remember when I'm hungry. And we had stacked it on, but the Spirit of God came around that table and we got to weeping. We got to weeping. And when we got to crying, Jesus made a statement and said, I have meat to eat that you know not of. I know more about that since I've lived in this for 25 years. We pushed our chairs back from the table and we got down and began to weep and to cry around that table while the food got cold. But we could not have cared less. Something had a hold of us. Something had a hold of us. And out of that, there was a message in tongues and there was an interpretation. And I've forgotten a lot of interpretations, but this one I have never forgotten and I never will. God spoke and he said, I am sending the chariot of revival into the earth. And he said, nothing or no one will stop this chariot of revival. He said, because the wheels of this chariot have been oiled with the oil of the Holy Ghost. And he said, this chariot is moving through the land. I began to sob and cry. I began to sob and cry. And as best as I knew how, I climbed into the chariot. I said, Jesus, whatever you do, don't ever let me be shaken out of this chariot. No matter how rough the ride gets, help me to hang in here. Help me to hang on. Don't ever let me get knocked out of this thing. Don't ever let me get loose from this thing. I'm going to ride this chariot. That's what's happening, friend. I've come tonight to tell you this. Nobody or no thing or no one is ever going to stop this move of God that's begun now. No one's ever going to stop what's going on now. No one's going to stop this one because this one has been oiled with the oil of the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and shake and tremble. Just go ahead and rejoice. Just go ahead and let your faith go because there is something here tonight that is more wonderful, more wonderful. You don't seem very excited. You don't seem quite excited enough. I think we can put a little more into that than that. I think we can put a little more into it. From the balcony to the floor, from the right to the left, from the left to the right, from the ceiling to the floor. Revival is here. And it's going to go on. And it's going to go on. And it's going to get greater. And it's going to get greater. And it's going to get greater.
There are men on this platform that are receiving the gifts of the Spirit in their ministry. The gift of faith is here. I'm not sure I'm going to go any farther. But tonight, if there's anything wrong in your body, the gift of faith is in this place. And angels are dispatched now among the people to heal you of every disease, of every disease, of every affliction, of every affliction. In the balcony, there's a sweep that's going across. You can feel it as easily as you feel him. You are healed as easily as you feel him. You are healed. If you've got an affliction, would you raise both hands and would you begin to just shout with your voice? There's a mass healing in this place. There is mass healing in this place. There are tumors that are disappearing from your bodies. Jesus! Cancer! Cancer right now is being healed! Right now! In Jesus' name! in upon this thing. I'm not going to preach any farther to you because I don't have to. The Holy Ghost is here. People, you need to begin to minister to each other. You've got to start somewhere. You might as well really start here tonight. You want to lay your hands on people near to you. Climb over the pews and go after them. You want to climb those stairs in the balcony and lay hands upon people and begin to pray for them. There have been a lot of people healed here. That there are more being healed here tonight. some muscular dystrophy over there in that corner. There are two children over in that corner. Somebody go to them and lay hands on them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Nathaniel, I command you to be healed, Nathaniel, in the name of Jesus. I command you to be healed, Nathaniel, in the name of Jesus Christ. I curse this affliction in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I command this back to be healed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command it. I command it. There's one being healed right there. There's another one right there. 